Hello, friends. Welcome to Chickenlandia and welcome to Bok Talk, your 100% friendly backyard chickens show. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you to everybody that is listening on the podcast. And for those of you that are here live today on the chat on YouTube, thank you so much for being here. Hold on, I got this is gonna drive me nuts. I'm not <laughs> I'm like not centered here. Oh, how is that? Okay, there you go. There you go. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about adopting chickens, rescuing chickens. I know our last Bok Talk was a bit of a downer. It really, it really was. It was about sudden chicken death. That's not fun. Uh, <laughs> a lot of good information in it. You should definitely listen to it. But today we're going to be talking about something more fun, uh, you know, more hopeful in these times that are trying for everybody. So um, if you would like to submit a question to Bok Talk, you can go to my website, welcome to chickenlandia.com and go to the contact section. There's a little drop down menu and you can go to ask a chicken question. So go there and ask your question. If you have trouble, because a few people have had trouble getting through um, the form on the website. If you have trouble, just go, just email me president at welcome to chickenlandia.com. And I, you, I may answer your question on Bok Talk. I can't answer every question. I do read every question, but it's just getting nearly impossible for me to answer all of them because I get so many questions. Um, but today I am answering a listener question. So if you're interested in being chicken famous, you should definitely submit a question. <laughs> Uh, and while you're there, you can join my mailing list, guys. It's called Chickenlandia Nation. You will be in a club, the most elite club for chicken people, in my opinion. <laughs> it's elite, but it's not exclusive. Everybody is welcome. So definitely join my mailing list. You'll get a little discount for my course, which is uh, Chickenlandia's Backyard Chickens. Uh, wait a minute. What is it? <laughs> Chickenlandia's Backyard Chickens 101, a chicken course for everyone. You will get a discount on it, but you got to join the mailing list. So uh, would love to see you there. Would love to see you in the course. Always love to see you. So I just want to say hello to some of the people in the chat. Pepper the chicken. Hello. Rhiannon is here. Francine is here. Thank you so much for being here. Our wood chip garden is here. The chicken is here. Thank you for being here. Of course, I've got the Chickenlandia presidential advisor. Which, uh, she is Chickenlandia's newest team member. Lots of knowledge. If you ask a question in the chat, she may answer it. And 13 Moons Homestead, another trusted moderator. Victoria Fox, thank you for being here. We've got lots of people here today. Thank you so much. So let's get right into the content. So adopting chickens. A lot of people message me and they say, hey, you know, I want to, I want to rescue some chickens. What, what do I do? Where, where do I go to do that? And honestly, like, there is no shortage of chickens that need homes out there. Um, so really where you need to start, uh, it's very easy. You could go to your local classifieds. Usually that's Craigslist, but it depends on where you live and that will bring up some options for you for sure. Now, if you're going to go through something like that, like I do consider that rescue because usually it's people that are like, you know, Oh, my chickens are two years old. They're not laying as much as they did when they were one year old. You know, I'm I want to I want to give them up. I want to get you know replace my flock. So a lot of times people will do that, and it's a great way to get some rescue chickens. Those chickens are still going to be laying eggs. They won't lay like a one year old chicken will lay, but they're going to be they will lay well if they're good layers for a few years for you. 
Um, and of course, they'll offer you very good fertilizer. They're, they they will aerate your garden, all that good stuff. Um, but just be careful because there is false advertising on Craigslist and other classifieds. Like, I, you know, not so much on Facebook anymore because they're kind of cracking down on that. But in other forums, sometimes people will be like, hey, I have 10 hens, 10 laying hens that I want to rehome. You know, who, who, who wants these wonderfully laying hens? And turns out it's 10 roosters, okay? <laughs> and if you're new, sometimes you might not be able to tell if they're roosters or they're hens. Uh, you know, someone like me, I could tell pretty quickly. But if you're new at this, it's not that easy. So you got to really kind of uh, make sure that you do your research Make sure that you feel good about where you're getting your chickens from. Um, you really don't want to adopt chickens, especially if you're new from a place that as hard as it is, if it's like total squalor, you do not want to adopt chickens from that place. Um, you know, you may want to let the authorities know, but you might not want to get chickens from there because it could be a situation where you will bring disease into your flock. And we're going to talk about that more in a little bit. Um, and then another option for you would be to contact your local humane society. Our humane society actually gets chickens and adopts chickens out, but not every humane society does that, but they might, even if they don't do that, they might be able to tell you where to go. Like if you want to adopt a chicken that was in a factory farm um, or just a chicken that no longer has a home. Um, and then another thing that you can do is contact a local rescue or a local sanctuary and say, Hey, you know, I'm really interested in rescuing some chickens. Can you lead me in the right direction? And, you know, just like the humane society, most of the time they really want to help. Um, and even if they don't adopt out chickens, they can tell you where to go. So um, sometimes, though, when you adopt chickens, or you, and especially if you're rescuing chickens from a situation, you can run into problems. So that brings me to a question that I got via my website from a fan, and her name is Sherry. And she says... I have an unusual chicken situation that I need advice on. Well, you came to the right place, Sherry. <laughs> One of our neighbors drives a truck and transports chickens. He had five chickens that got out of a crate and they were roaming around the neighborhood. Uh-oh. I was able to catch two and added them to my own flock of chickens. Well, let me tell you, Sherry, those are some lucky chickens. <laughs> uh, and the neighbor didn't mind. He didn't mind. Um, he he picked one up and then he left two. So there were two chickens roaming around in her neighborhood. Turning the page. Another neighbor claimed them, but they let them slip them and taking care of them. So I'm, I'm trying, trying to condense it a little bit. Um, so it, it ended up that she would only see one chicken roaming around and it hung out by her fence for several days and then ended up jumping the fence and getting into the yard with her chickens. Now, of course, her chickens attacked her because uh, chickens have a very strong pecking order instinct. They do not like it when newcomers just walk into their flock. Usually that chicken will get attacked. So there is a whole process that you must follow to integrate new chickens into your flock. And I do have a video about that. It's called how to add chickens to an existing flock. And I'll put that in the description and in, in the show notes for you. So she put the chicken in a quarantine area and the chicken did not look very good. Look, she said she looks like she's molting and she looks pitiful. Now, a lot of times when a chicken is really stressed out, they will, it will push them into a molt. So sometimes that happens. I want to keep her, but I'm afraid she could have lice or mites. That's a legitimate fear. <laughs> I noticed the day that she uh, looks like she has a runny nose. 
So I'm giving her apple cider vinegar in her water and in the morning. Any suggestions? Thanks in advance for your answer. Well, you are welcome, Sherry. Um, and thank you for taking her in. She's a very lucky chicken. Super duper lucky chicken. So whenever I adopt a new chicken or rescue a new chicken or chickens, it's better if you can. This is a, this is a special situation, but it's always better to adopt chickens in groups in groups rather than just one. So two, three, four chickens at a time rather than just trying to add one chicken to your flock. And the reason for that is it's a lot of stress on that one chicken to be integrated into an existing flock and they will get bullied. Um, there will be a rough um, period of working out that pecking order. So that's just something to be aware of. Now I've done that many times. I have integrated one chicken into my flock many, many, many times, but I've been doing this for a while. Okay. So if you're new at this, uh, you know, and it's, if it's an especially timid chicken, it's better to get them a friend. Um, and usually if you get like, if you get one chicken from one place and you get another chicken from another place and they're both leaving the places that they knew and they're coming into a new place, it's easier to integrate them together because they're so like, what is going on that they're not as concerned with the pecking order. So there will be a little bit of squabbling, but it wouldn't be as bad as if, you know, like putting, you know, those two chickens right into a big flock. So um, I totally lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? <laughs> Hold on. What the heck was I talking about? Tell somebody in the chat, tell me where I was at. <laughs> where was I going with that? Oh, so, so it's usually best to integrate more than one chicken at once. If you're new at this, it's just easier that way. And it's definitely no matter how many times you've done it, it's easier on the chicken. So there is a process that I follow whenever I bring a new rescue into the flock. And that's whether or not, you know, usually I really try to make sure that they're healthy. I will look them over. Um, and if they appear healthy, that is one thing. But I will quarantine them. The, you know, the first thing I do is I make sure that there's an area for them that's away from my existing flock that I can keep them in for at least a couple of weeks. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, if you quarantine them and they're fine, then everything's fine. But that's actually not true. There is still a risk. Even if you quarantine chickens and they seem fine, every flock carries its own set of pathogens that they're immune to. So it's possible. It's not guaranteed, but it's possible that a chicken could be completely asymptomatic and be carrying something around that your chickens are not immune to. So that would, that m potentially could pose a problem when they get put together. And a lot of times you'll see this with coccidiosis because, you know, coccidiosis is everywhere. It's just, it's just everywhere. Um, but there are different strains of it. So you could have one flock that is immune to a certain strain and another flock that's immune to another strain or strains. And if you put them together, then they are introduced or quite abruptly to strains that they're not familiar with, that their bodies don't have never been introduced to and haven't had a chance to develop immunity to. So that's when you get a situation where adult chickens have are getting coccidiosis. Um, you know, and if, if, if you're doing everything else right, you know, it could be a situation where they're living in a lot of mud and stuff like that. And that's not a good situation in terms of, of that particular parasite. Cause they really like muddy, wet conditions. But um, you know, if you're doing everything right, your chickens can still get coccidiosis from another flock of chickens that appear absolutely hundred percent healthy. So I'm not saying that to scare you, but I do want you to know what the risk is because it's always about calculating, okay, how much risk am I willing to absorb? So during the quarantine time, I will give the chickens in their water a couple of drops of rescue remedy every day. 
Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know, you likely know what Rescue Remedy is because I talk about it a lot. It is a homeopathic flower remedy. It is very gentle and it just helps to take the edge off. And there is a flower essence in it because it's a combination remedy called Star of Bethlehem. And that is a really good one for trauma and grief that is really difficult to move past. Um, and that, it, I mean, I, I've taken it. Okay. <laughs> like they have a human grade one. You can take it. Um, <laughs> but they have it for pets. If you go to like PetSmart or um, Petco, usually they have it there and they usually have it at health food stores. Um, so that's a good one. I find that, you know, there are some chickens that are really sensitive and they have a really hard time just getting over that, that trauma that they experienced. So I would definitely do that. And then when I'm, when I get to the point where I'm integrating them together, I will give rescue remedy to the whole flock. So that it kind of takes the edge off while they're working out that pecking order. Um, apple cider vinegar is great. Sherry, uh, you, one tablespoon per gallon is good. Um, a good immune booster, great for their systems. I would also give scrambled eggs with a little bit of garlic and some herbs. And you can get herbs that are prepackaged that are made for chickens. Or my two favorite herbs are oregano and thyme. And you know, I grow those and just dry them out and give it to them. Um, and usually if you get like, I, I know that the prepackaged brand that I get, and I'll put a link to that in the, in the description and show notes. Um, that one has both oregano and thyme in it and garlic. And I think it has ginger and some other stuff that's really good for them. So, um, that would be a good kind of just boost for them. And plus it's like, there's my dogs. <laughs> And plus it's like it's scrambled eggs. They're like, oh my gosh, I landed in heaven here. So um, I would, regardless of whether or not I saw mites or lice on them or eggs on them or any of that, I would dust them for mites and lice. And I do use diatomaceous earth. Um, I understand that diatomaceous earth is not everyone's cup of tea. Uh, to me, it poses a very low level of risk if you use the food grade diatomaceous earth. Um, and that is amorphous diatomaceous earth, not crystalline diatomaceous earth, which is used for pool filtering and industrial stuff and is not safe. Okay. But food grade diatomaceous earth is in is considered generally safe and it's in like so much stuff that we use every single day, like makeup and food and toothpaste and all that stuff. Um, I will do that and I'll give them a good dusting 10 days apart. And it, if there is a place where they can dust bathe and you can put a little bit in that area, I would do that too. Um, but you can also use a um, pyrethroid product, a powder or a spray, or you can use Electro PSP, which is a really good product, um, but it's very expensive. And if you're using a pyrethroid, just uh, be mindful. That's very toxic to cats, okay? So um, I will do that regardless. Um, I might even treat them for scaly leg mite, even if I don't see them, because it's so, where I live, it's so common. Um, I have dealt with it so much. If you've watched my videos, you might see that some of my chickens, they appear to have it. Um, they have been treated many times. Uh, sometimes when I get a chicken and they have it, uh, it the, the scales just never seem to go back to the way they were. So that is very common. And the way that you can treat for that is you just get some uh, oil. You can get some, what I think is the easiest is just get a, a little tub and put some vegetable oil in it. And you can just get like a cheap vegetable oil from Costco and dip their legs in it and just do that, you know, every few days while they're in quarantine. And that will definitely get rid of, uh, it suffocates the scaly leg mites. Um, and then I would, I would offer fermented feed if you're, if you, if that's something that you're interested in doing, it's definitely a good thing to do 
when you're bringing in a new chicken and you really just want to give them the best chance. Now, if you notice that your chicken is, that this new chicken is sick, that, that really is a problem. Like you do have a dilemma at that point because you will have to make the choice of whether or not to ever integrate that chicken into your flock. And the reason I say that is even if that chicken, you know, we were just talking about it earlier, even if that chicken recovers, it's possible that they're carrying uh, something that can affect your flock because they don't have immunity to it. So it's not, like I said, it's not guaranteed. I've certainly integrated chickens with the sniffles, you know, that they had the sniffles. When they came to me, I got them well. I integrated with them into my flock. I was just, I, I follow a channel on um, Instagram, great channel, uh, uh, Baking with Chickens. She's She's got a great personality. <laughs> um, and she got a new super cute, rooster and he had the sniffles and she really, I mean, he was, he was, he was pretty sick and she like, you know, totally nursed him back to health. And now he's a, he's a cranky little rooster, you know? <laughs> um, and she integrated him into her flock and they're, they're okay. But you need to know that when you do that, you are taking a risk and you need to be prepared for that. And I would, if you decide, okay, I'm going to go forward with this, I would definitely take measures to boost the immunity and really kind of reevaluate your practices with your current flock to make sure that they are in tip top shape. Okay. Um, and you know, for, I, I had just recently adopted a chicken. I call her a mop, but <laughs> rumor has it. She's a chicken, even though she looks like a mop. She's a She's a Polish uh, frizzle, uh, and her name is Gizmo, and there is a video about it. I think it's called, like, I Adopted a Mop Chicken or something like that, <laughs> or I Adopted a Chicken That Looks Like a Mop. <laughs> and she is super-duper adorable. She was very loved where she came from, but she kind of had problems, like, her whole, you know, from baby, from chickhood, uh, she, I think she had coccidiosis as a baby and had to be like nursed through that. And then, um, her flock got attacked by raccoons and her owner, who's a friend of mine was like, please come and get her because I'm really scared. Like I can't secure the coop well enough where I feel comfortable to leave her in there. So I went and I got her. Um, but she had a runny nose and she was sneezing. And so I was like, okay, you know, in that moment I had to make that decision. Okay, what am I going to do? And I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to do all the things that I do, which is everything I was just talking about. I also did the REST remedy, which is um, an acronym in Chickenlandia. The R stands for remove from flock. I didn't have to do that because she didn't have a flock. <laughs> the E stands for vitamins, electrolytes, and probiotics, which I put into her water. The S stands for scrambled egg, which I gave her and I get, put herbs and garlic in them. And the T stands for temperature control. And that's when you bring them inside and, you know, make sure that they don't have to like work to regulate their body temperature. So if it's like really hot and they're sick, you want to bring them inside so that they don't have to work to stay cool. If it's really cold outside, you want to bring them inside so that they don't have to work to stay warm. And it's also a good idea if you have a sick chicken in your flock to remove them simply because they, they could get attacked by their flock. That's how the pecking order is, unfortunately. Um, if they sense weakness, they will try to remove that weakness. So you don't want that. And also you have more of a chance of not having something spread through your flock if you remove them from the flock quickly, although they've, they've likely been, been exposed. But if you're putting apple cider vinegar in their water, that's a good way to kind of slow that spread down. So she, you know, she got better very quickly um, with just some TLC and the re the rest remedy is it's my, uh, there's a video about it. It's called sick chicken action plan. And it, that's just what I do whenever I have a sick chicken. Of course, your best course, of, this is all supportive care, okay? Your best course of action is to seek veterinary care. 
Um, but there's supportive care that you can offer at home. And sometimes it really helps, but sometimes you need something more. Okay. So I did end up integrating Gizmo into my flock. She has integrated beautifully. She is, I have never seen a chicken eat like this chicken. <laughs> She eats, she eats so much. And it's funny because her owner was like, I just want to let you know, like she really eats a lot. <laughs> I was like, what, what is going on? Uh, another thing I did with her is since she was, since she had the sniffles, I was, I was uh, putting some essential oils on a paper towel, just putting a few drops of some gentle essential oils, uh, lavender, eucalyptus, and thyme. Those are great essential oils for uh, any kind of um, respiratory thing that's going on. I put them on a paper towel and hang it up in her coop. And she, they were, her and her little friend were living in a little coop. And that will help. That just seemed to really help them. And um, there's also a product called Vet RX. And that has essential oils in it. And you put that actually on them. You can put it under their wings. You can put it around their beak. But if you put it under their wings, they'll get it all over their face when they preen. Um, and that actually has some very strong uh, um, essential oils in it. It's got camphor, which is a really strong essential oil. Um, but it's, it's, it's diluted. So uh, I don't put essential oils on my chickens. Um, but I'm comfortable with that product because it's diluted. Okay. So yeah, she's, she's back into my flock, even, you know, with the quarantine, I, I did end up feeling comfortable with it and she's doing great. So for me, I, I feel like it is worth it because that's what chicken landia is. You know, we, we rescue chickens. I do, I do buy chickens every once in a while. <laughs> when I'm feeling, you know, I, I do, I can, I confess I do. Um, but for, I always like to leave room for rescues. So uh, that's really close to my heart because chickens have given me so much. I want to give something back to them. So I'm willing to take that risk. And I also have a lot of experience. Um, if you don't have that much experience, I really would not recommend trying to integrate a sick chicken into your flock. Uh, definitely at the very least quarantine them until they're completely well, which is what Sherry did. She, she quarantined her. She did give her a homeopathic that I sometimes use for, uh, for respiratory issues with chickens. It's called Antimodium crudum in a 30 C potency. Um, and I am somebody that uses and, uh, homeopathics. I've been using them for 25 years. Um, and it, it ended up working well for her. And antimonium crudum is indicated when they're really got like a like rattling going on, like so much congestion that is just, you can hear it. That's when, that's when antimonium crudum could possibly help. Um, sometimes it might not be the right remedy. Uh, because homeopathics work a little bit different the way th than traditional medicine. But in this case, it helped. And Sherry integrated this little chicken into her flock. And now the chicken is super happy. So that's, there's your happy ending. There is your happy ending. Um, yeah. Uh, this chicken who fell off out of a crate on a truck is now living a wonderful chicken life. So... There you go there, <laughs> Sherry. I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for helping out this chicken. And, um, I just think it's great that she's with you now. My dogs are going crazy and my kid is supposed to like watch and listen and like stop them from barking. <laughs> it's not happening. They're just going crazy and no one cares. Uh, <laughs> So I do want to say hello to some folks in the chat. Eddie Abernathy is here. Hold on just a second, guys. You didn't see that. 
Can I cut that out? <laughs> everybody's coming home and everybody's being really, really loud. Shout outs. Yes. <laughs> the dogs would like to shout out every single channel on YouTube. <laughs> Oh, I have five rescue dogs. If you, uh, let's talk about rescue. I have five rescue dogs. Uh, there, uh, four of them are hairless, <laughs> and I have one toy poodle, and um, they are a lot of fun, but they're really loud. Okay, Celia Perry is here. Sunny's place is here. Bok Bok McKay, thank you for being here. Elizabeth De La Cruz is here, and let's see who else. Musafera, I hope I pronounced that right. Michael is here. Roger, so many people here today. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. So what I want to do right now is just um, open up. Hold on. Let me do that again. <laughs> We do that again for the podcast. You guys get, you know, the the real. This is me keeping it real. <laughs> the podcast gets the filtered version. <laughs> so, uh, what I'd like to do right now is open up the chat for questions. If you have a question for me, please uh, write your question in all uppercase so that I can see them <laughs> with these 46 year old eyes. <laughs> um, so yeah. And, um, I will try to get to as many questions as I can. I can't answer every single question and, uh, please remember that. Um, I, I, I can't even remember what I, I can't remember what I was going to tell you to remember. <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. The chicken asks, can chickens get COVID? I am not qualified to answer that question. <laughs> not qualified. You'll have to add, you'll have to go to the CBC, CDC website. Rhiannon asks, is the integration the same as when you add chicks once they are full grown or is it less, is it less risky? So, um, you mean like integration of rescue chickens or, uh, you know, a, 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 adding chicks. I think I know what you're asking. So adding baby chicks is not very risky in terms of disease, you know, introducing disease into your flock because likely they haven't been exposed to much unless they, unless there was something, you know, you want to make sure that you're going through a reputable breeder or reputable, um, a uh, hatchery, um, a good farm store, if you're getting them from the farm store, uh, because there are diseases that go from chicken to egg, actually. So, and and there are generally lots of problems that can happen from poor breeding. So uh, you don't want that. But in general, I would say you're pretty, you're, it's pretty good if you're adding baby chicks to your flock, you know, once they get bigger and they can go into your flock, uh, it, it, the risk for introducing disease from the baby chicks is relatively low compared to if you got a chicken from, you know, uh, Joe down the street who, you know, wasn't really taking good care of them in the first place. <laughs> Celia Terry says, how can you deter hawks? I'm going to start using Premier One fencing and was wondering if you have any ideas of what could go over the fence. So I, I love the Premier One fencing and I, I assume that it, it's electric fencing that you're using. Um, so I did have a friend and there, there is a video about it and I can't remember if I show it in the video, but she used the, the Premier One fencing and then she basically had these wires that went from the coop down to the ground next to the fencing. And it wasn't like all netted, um, but it had, it, it was almost like a canopy of like wiring that went from the coop 
down to basically where the fencing was. It was, I don't think it was attached to the fencing because it's electric fencing, but, um, and that was really great for deterring aerial predators. Um, and it, because they just, they, they need to be able to, to land, they have to like swoop and land. So the, the main thing that I would ask is if you do that, you want to, um, probably tie some tinsel or some, uh, um, predator tape, which they sell at, you know, they sell it online or you could probably find it at the farm store. It's like, um, hawk tape and it's, it's glittery. It's like a uh, really reflective and aerial predators don't like that. Now the tape itself is not enough to deter them. I, w I really wish it was, but it, it really is not. I mean, when, when we, when my husband and I had a farm store, um, we tied up some tape because we had chickens at the, at the store. And so we tied up tape to, to get our CDs. We tied up the CDs, the reflective CDs. And I rem remember there was a hawk just like sitting next to one of them. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, there you go. So um, it's a, it's good to have that, but it's not by itself is not enough. So I would put some reflective stuff on it so they don't swoop in. Because you don't want them to get injured. Okay. And Rhiannon, thank you so much for the super chat. You're, you're the best. What can I say? You're the best. Uh, Elizabeth de la Cruz asks, what can I feed my flock as a high source of calcium? Um, a really good one actually is, is grubs that are made from black soldier fly larva. Um, very high in calcium and also very good for them, full of protein, yummy, healthy fats for them. Um, don't go overboard. Don't give them just like so much, <laughs> but uh, you can give them some of those every day. And, and that is a great source of calcium. And then of course there's calcium supplements like um, you can give oyster shell. Uh, right now there's a shortage of oyster shell. You may have noticed but uh, it, it won't last forever. But um, the oyster shell is great. You can offer that in a separate dish and they, they know to eat it. They will eat it. Even if you don't see them eating it, they will eat it. Um, or you can actually crush their own eggshells and feed those back to them. And that's a, another way to give them calcium. Now, if I'm doing the eggshell thing, I, would, I do like to kind of replenish that calcium. So it's not just like, the same source coming from their own bodies. Um, so I will every once in a while give them uh, the oyster shell and also the grubs are great. Thank you, Rhiannon. That's, that's very kind of you. <laughs> Baking with chickens is here. Hi, Dahlia. Heard you gave my little dude a shout out. Yeah, I did. He deserves one, right? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he's a, he's a funny guy. He's a, what is he? Is he, is he Polish? Is he a Polish? I think he is. Precious princess asks, do you know any online vets? I do not. Um, that doesn't mean that they're not there. I just don't know of them. Um, I do, certainly not avian vets. Um, you know, I think that would be a great business to get into, especially now when we're a little bit more open to, uh, you know, kind of doing this tele appointment thing where possibly you could talk to the vet over a Zoom call um, and you know, even though it's not as good as a, as a animal being, you know, being seen physically by a vet, you could get some information like that. But, um, I imagine there's a liability involved with that. And so that's why we don't see it that much, but it would be great if there was an online vet for chickens, that would be wonderful. Okay, guys, I'm going to answer one more question. Oh, and he is Polish. <laughs> uh, um, baking with chicken says, yeah, he's Polish. He's a funny little guy. He's an ungrateful rooster right now. You know, I got one of those too, but I have a new a baby rooster. His name is, 
I'm just going to tell you, there's a video coming out about them on Wednesday. So I have a new baby rooster. I was going to name him Bubba Sparks. I don't know if you remember Bubba, Bubba Sparks, but you know, that's what, that's what I remember from <laughs> early 2000s. Uh, he was a rapper and, but I kept calling him Bubbalicious. So his name is Bubbalicious and he's adorable. He's, he's a little buff silky and he's really puffy and just so cute. Um, and he's going to be bigger than Philippe. So we will see. We will see. Okay. I just saw a, uh, yes, Cyrus Fernandez. Can chicks of different ages go out to the coop, um, at once eight weeks, six weeks and three weeks. So there's a big difference between three weeks and eight weeks. Six weeks and eight weeks, you're better off. That, you know, there's not much of a difference there. Uh, depending on the breed, likely at six weeks, and depending on the weather that that is outside, um, they will likely be okay going out together. But the three-week-olds, they likely still need supplemental heat depending on the climate where that you are in. So uh, certainly putting them with an adult flock would be a big no-no, um, especially for the three-week-olds. They need to be about, they need to be either adults or about the same size as your existing flock for that integration to go smoothly, okay? And um, I have a video coming out on Wednesday. It's it's funny you should ask about this. Because I have a video coming out on Wednesday, and I think it's going to be called, it might be called something different because, you know, I go through it many times, like changing the title 20 times before it goes up. Um, uh, how to safely put your baby chicks outside. Um, and I talk about, you know, what you need to do, how, if the temperature is still getting cold outside, what you need to do and how to slowly introduce them just to the outdoors and expose them to their natural environment. I talk about that. So that is probably going to help you. Um, and yeah, three weeks is, is, is young for baby chicks, I would try to wait um, until, and it really depends on on uh, breed and uh, what the weather is like where you live. But usually at three weeks, they're not ready to go outside yet. Okay, in general. So guys, thank you so much for being here today. I wanna thank my moderators. And uh, my moderators, uh, Chickenlandia Presidential Advisor, who is also my co-producer, and 13 Moons Homestead. Thank you so much for moderating this episode. Thank you to Talking to Crows for editing this episode. She's gonna have. She's gonna have. They're <laughs> wait. I gotta say that again, <laughs> and they're gonna laugh because I'm saying this. <laughs> Thank you to Talking to Crows for editing this episode. You will have your hands full with this one <laughs> between the dogs and me <laughs> getting up. Uh, thank you to Double M Ranch Designs for the wonderful podcast art that you have provided for my channel and all the great things you provide for my channel. Guys, if you enjoy this podcast, please rate and review it. That really helps. It really helps, especially on iTunes. <laughs> on the, uh, the podcast. Is it, is it iTunes? Um, is that what it's called? I don't know. The Apple podcasts, uh, that really helps. Um, and last but not least, I want you to know above all other things that you, you are welcome in Chickenlandia. <laughs> Thanks guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.